One, just listening to constituents is, is important. Um, we may disagree on a number of items, but it's still a, it's important that I get out here and just hear what their thought processes are. Um, a level of, of angst out there, and most of it centers around the Health Care Act. And that is because it is a very personal issue to a lot of people. It's an emotional issue. It is one of those top line issues that uh, touches everyone in all aspects of their livelihood. So uh, I understand that. We want to make sure that, that I'm looking at the bills that are proposed and making sure that they'll work for it for most Iowans. In regards to the, to the Ryan slash House plan as we know it, um, you express support up there, I think, for continuing some sort of subsidy for people? There is a tax credit that is available. And that's good enough for you? It is, I'm still looking at that because I do have concerns about making sure we have the right supports in place for the people that truly need it. So those that are at the lower end of that income level. Uh, so I want to make sure that those tax credits are actually working for our hardworking Iowans that are struggling to make ends meet. Um, does that do that sufficiently right now? I don't know that it does. So I want to take a look at that. We'll see what the final form is and make sure that uh, we're, we're focusing on the people that really need this. Senator, the issue of Medicaid came up several times today, uh, and you expressed, it sounded like some support for the Medicaid expansion that we've seen under the Affordable Care Act. What are you looking for in this new bill as it regards Medicaid? Well, again, that we're focusing on the, the people that truly do need the assistance. Now, how that will translate into a final version of the bill, again, I'm going to have to sort through it because I, I can't tell you whether I'm going to support it or not support it today because I just don't know what the final bill is going to look at. But we do know that there are 150,000 Iowans that went through Medicaid expansion. These are those folks that might be working jobs, but they just can't quite make ends meet and, and purchase insurance on their own, so they've been in, absorbed into that Medicaid system. So we want to weigh that um, moving forward and make sure that it's going to work for our hardworking Iowans. Senator, there's been a lot of talk about with, with Obamacare and then with, with the Ryan plan uh, about uh, covering health insurance. What talk is there amongst Republicans about actually tackling ways to lower health care costs? And that, I think, is getting to the very heart of this as well, is that we talk a lot about insurance coverage but we're not addressing the costs of actual health care. Um, so what are those hidden expenses that are out there? Uh, we heard one lady that was frustrated with prescription medicine costs. Uh, those are all things that we need to look at. We need to take a holistic approach. Um, that is not necessarily being addressed in this particular bill, but it is something that we need to explore. You one of the to, things in this bill is that it would allow insurance companies to charge up to 66 percent more to older sicker patients how does that control costs well it's it's proposed right now it's going back to the way it was before obamacare the proposal is instead of the three to one ratio it would be back to the five to one ratio but then the states could make that final determination on what ratio they would actually use how do you feel after today, uh, these two meetings, do, do you feel a little bit of a disconnect with your constituency or do you think these crowds in larger cities were loaded with people, you know, who oppose Republican ideas or what, what do you I, make of all this? I think generally when people are okay with the way their government is working, they're not calling, they're not coming out. Uh, what we wanted to hear from are those people that maybe really do have those concerns and just understand where they're coming from. Um, when I'm out going across the state of Iowa, I hear different concerns too. I, I spoke with a couple of women yesterday at a small business. One of them is a single mom with two young boys that are headed off to college. She chooses to pay the penalty because she can't afford Obamacare. She said it's either make the choice of sending my children to college or pay for this insurance, which I'm gonna be paying out of pocket anyway. The other woman explained that she's paid, it's just her, an individual plan. She pays about $400 a month with a $9,000 deductible. And she said, I feel ridiculous doing this. So how do you balance those that? anecdotes with, you know, the, I don't know, thousands of people, I guess, or hundreds at least, that showed up at these two meetings that really disagreed with 
what you were saying on that issue and several others. I mean, it seemed yeah. like. And, and again, we didn't specifically ask the people in the audience, are you on the exchanges? I don't know how many people in the audience are, or how many are on um, Medicare, how many were specifically on Medicaid with the expansion, um, or how many might actually have employer provided health insurance. So we just, we need to understand what the makeup of Iowa is and then take a look at whatever plan is presented and see if that actually does work. But one, we want to make sure their coverage is affordable, and right now it's not. And you mentioned that um, you know some of your staff were taking notes um, mm -hmm. with what the people were saying. After these meetings, you might have more. Uh, what are you going to do with those notes when you get back to Washington? Um, we'll sort through them. There are a number of cards as well that they have filled out with questions or concerns, and then we'll respond back either with phone calls or letters, um, kind of the position that we have, the, the thoughts that they have shared with us. But it is a great way to kind of see what's going on, you know, in their minds too. And who knows, a number of those cards may say, you know, stay the course because we don't want Obamacare. Um, so we'll see what they say and then and get back to those constituents. Okay. We've got time for one more. Senator, do you think, like we heard several of the same questions in Cedar Rapids as we heard here, and we also heard several people insisting, I'm not paid to be here. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like the anger that we saw from I guess the majority of people is an organic development or, or something else. Is it organized or is it just people coming out? I, and I know they're not paid to be here, I, you know, and I've never made that accusation. Um, so uh, I understand their, their anger, but I do think there is a level of organization through different groups, um, maybe not all cohesive but similar situations where they're holding up the agree, disagree signs, right. or you're lying, or you know things like that. So there is some coaching out there, whether it's just shared through Facebook or whatever, you know, who knows. But their concerns are valid concerns. We want to address them. So we're listening out there, and, and hopefully they got something out of this. Uh, it was more of a, a listening post. I wanted to hear some of their thoughts. Uh, the cost going back to hospitals, that's one that came up in Cedar Rapids and here. That's one that we're really not talking about. So I'm glad when I'm picking up new pieces of information, it makes me better informed. So I can take that back and we can delve into it and, and find out if there are solutions. I asked a couple people in Cedar Rapids after you event up there, you know, you say you're undecided. They think these, these are Democratic voters. They think you're just going to go along and support whatever is put in front of you by the Republican leadership. I mean, are you are you legitimately like undecided? Is there a possibility? You I am vote legitimately. I am legitimately undecided on this, and you will hear that from a number of my colleagues as well. Uh, we want to make sure that that one, it's sustainable, and and we're moving forward. We know that Obamacare is not sustainable. But we want to make sure that there is a, a good, stable transition period so that we're not losing people between the cracks is kind of the phrase that's been used. And uh, making sure that we have affordable coverage because right now we don't have affordable coverage. So those are some pretty big concerns that I have. Um, we're going to have to iron that out.